Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Moira Dillon and I'm an assistant professor of psychology at NYU in the cognition and perception program and in the developmental area. As you're seeing here, we have a lovely new developmental science suite on the third floor of Myra Hall, NYU's psychology building. Here's our bright and colorful waiting area for participating families and one excited baby scientist. Let's take a look at some of the current topics my lab is working on. My lab, the Lab for the Developing Mind at NYU, uses cognitive, developmental, and computational approaches to gain insight into the origin and development of our uniquely human cognition. From the basic sensitivities of infants, to the untutored use of symbols and language by children, to the high-level concepts of adults, we have active collaborations with mathematicians, neuroscientists, economists, educators, and humanists. And we have research partnerships with the National Museum of Mathematics here in New York City, and look at the online child lab. The lab's interdisciplinary approach allows us to address how the basic mechanisms of perception and cognition about objects, places, agents, and social partners that we share with other animals underlie our uniquely human reasoning and influence the products of our diverse human cultures. One active line of research in the lab focuses on children's spatial symbol interpretation and production. So for example, we ask what children include in their pictures when asked to draw exactly what they see. Drawing seems like an epitome of uniquely human expression, but we're exploring whether our symbolic art may in fact be constrained by our cognitive geometry, a constraint evidenced in young children's drawings. In a recent study, we tested four-year-old children who either sat in a colorful fort or looked at a small toy version of that fort and were asked to draw exactly what they saw. Here's a sense of what the setup for the, that experiment was like. First, you'll see the fort, then the toy. The fort was about six foot by seven foot, so you know, the size of a large New York City studio apartment. The toy was 1 20th its size. Take a look. One hour later. All right, nice job. Just like you're all done. Okay. So here are some example drawings from uh, children assigned to each of the conditions. And these drawings are representative of the study's overall findings. So children's drawings often omitted the walls that composed the fort's layout, but included the corresponding object parts for the toy. An explicit attention to objects for navigation, both with and without symbols, may lead children to prioritize objects in their drawings, which are explicit communicative tools. In another line of research, we're exploring how infants link symbols, like language, to the different kinds of stuff they encounter in everyday life, like objects and places. For example, when infants hear language, do they assume that that language is picking out a kind of object or a kind of place? If infants do intuitively expect language to refer to objects, can they nevertheless use language to learn about kinds of places? For example, fields versus rooms, just as they use language to learn about kinds of objects. These days, we're testing infants and children online on Zoom and using the platform Look It, the online child lab. Moving forward, we plan to test both online and in person. Although we also run plenty of studies with adults, it's all about what question we're trying to answer. So let me tell you about some of the unique spaces we have in the lab for conducting studies in person. Here are the lab's two main testing rooms. First, you can check out our amazing round room which was built especially for us. The room is about 16 and a half feet in diameter and it's perfectly cylindrical. The door is spring-loaded so that once it's closed, there are no distinctive geometric cues that can help someone inside find their bearing. We know of only one other room in the entire world, like this one. This room is perfect for us because it means that we can create specialized spaces that restrict the geometry to exactly what we want our participants to be using for any given experiment. As you can see here, we currently have the room set up for a study with children who are being asked to communicate in drawings and language about the different spatial elements they see. I challenge you to find a more unique spot in all of New York City. And here we have our infant testing room. As you can see, there's a nice big screen with no other distractions around. We control the stimuli either from the coding room or behind the screen. It'll be time for baby. A third line of work in the lab explores what goes on in our heads when we're answering difficult problems about the general properties of the spatial world. Often these are the kinds of problems that are captured um, in our formal systems of geometry and are taught in school. Do we try to remember rules that we've learned to solve these problems, for example, or do we use something like mental imagery? 
One thing that makes this work exciting is that most of our testing takes place at the National Museum of Mathematics, also known as MoMath, which is just a short walk from the NYU campus. We've been collaborating with MoMath since the lab opened. We don't just run studies there. We've also started our own talk series called Minds on Math, and we conduct lots of communication and outreach events in line with our lab's work to foster diversity and inclusion through community participation in science. We also make time for some fun at the museum. Finally, in collaboration with Dr. Brendan Lake, another faculty member in the department, our lab is building parallel tests of common sense appropriate for testing both infants and artificial intelligence systems. The content of these tests are directly inspired by the early emerging and phylogenetically ancient domains of knowledge, including agents, objects, and places present in human infants. Our first benchmark, the Baby Intuitions Benchmark, or BIB, tests the intuitive psychology of infants and AI to recognize that agents have preferences for particular goal objects, they act efficiently towards their goals, and they engage in complex series of instrumental action, actions to bring about their goals. Bridging the developmental and computational cognitive sciences will not only allow us to create AI that we can better understand, but also AI that can better understand us. And so I hope you enjoyed the brief introduction to my lab. Please feel free to reach out with any questions. You can find my contact information at the top of the slide. Thanks for your attention.